Hi, this is Lawrence Sanek at Home Seller Home Buyer Podcast. Thank you for joining us so you can learn about Home Buyer episode number 22, that new thing called TRID. T R I D TRID. So, okay, what is this TRID thing all about? Well, TRID is really an acronym for T. T-I-L-A, Truth and Lending Act, R, RESPA, the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, I, Integrated, and D, Disclosure. That's TRID. For all home buyers out there, for over 30 years, loan officers have been required to provide two documents any time a borrower submitted a loan application. These documents were known as the Good Faith Estimate and the Initial Truth and Lending Disclosure. At the time of closing, they also provided the HUD-1 settlement statement and the final truth and lending disclosure. Now the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB, has announced the TILA RESPA Integrated Disclosure, now known industry-wide as TRID. As part of the new rule, some new documents have merged as of October 3, 2015 when this procedure was implemented. The biggest change, the one that can affect a buyer and seller, is the new timeline. Lenders are now required to give the buyer these documents on certain times throughout the process, and if they do not, the closing must be pushed back. Application time, the GFE and TIL will be combined into a new form called the loan estimate, which is designed to give consumers, the home buyer, a better understanding of key features such as costs and risks of the mortgage for what they are applying. This form is to be provided no later than three days after the application. At closing, the HUD-1 and final TIL or TILA will be combined into the closing disclosure, which more clearly explains the final costs of the transaction. This form is to be provided to the consumers at least three days before the loan is consummated, previously known as closing. That is when the prospective borrower becomes contractually obligated as defined by Regulation Z, which in most states is the same as the closing date or when the borrower signs the promissory note. Now there are exceptions. As with any government program, there are exceptions to these rules. They only apply to real estate transactions that are being funded by lenders who are considered creditors. If a lender makes less than five loans in a year, they are not bound to these new regulations. They also don't apply to HELOCs, reverse mortgages, or loans secured by mobile homes or dwellings not attached to real property. The waiting period can be waived, but only in dire financial circumstances such as an imminent foreclosure. The borrowers must provide the lender with a dated written statement describing the emergency and specifically amending or waiving the waiting period. The statement must be signed by all parties to the contract on the buyer's side. The waiver may not be pre-printed statement from the lender. So how does this affect investors? While these new rules and procedures mainly affect the retail home buyer, why would investors care? Well, For buy and hold investors, this won't be much of a change. It will have the most effect on flippers, who typically sell their flips to those retail home buyers. There are very specific circumstances that can change the loan terms, which would require a new closing disclosure be given to the buyer, which comes with its own three-day review period. If this happens more than three days before closing, your deal will probably go through as planned. But if this happens less than three days before closing, your deal gets thrown off. These new disclosures were originally set to take effect on April 1st of 2015, but feedback from the lending institutions has pushed the new deadline to October 3rd, which they are now in effect. Keep these dates in mind if you have properties on the market or coming on the market soon. Closing before October 1st, 
could help your deal go more smoothly. For properties that are closing in the first few weeks or even months of these new changes, you may experience some delays while the closing companies work out the bugs. If you do come across a delayed closing due to these rules, consider writing an amendment to extend or change the date of closing. While this delay may eat up a few days, it is better than trying to find a new buyer. However, I would never recommend allowing the buyer to occupy your home before closing even for just a day. There are so many things that can go wrong with this, I couldn't even begin to list them all. As the lending institutions and closing companies work their way through these procedures, expect uh, some additional problems at the beginning, but understand patience will go a long way in saving your deal. I have included many links to several downloadable loan estimate and closing disclosures, both in English and Spanish, and samples for the different types of loans. So don't forget, go to the website, Home Seller, Home Buyer, and you will be able to download all of these different forms for the ones that you would be interested in. So now, you know all about TRID and what it can or cannot do to making sure that a deal closes. All right. Thank you for listening to Home Buyer Episode 22, all about TRID. We're grateful for the time you have taken to listen to this podcast, and we look forward to your input and what you would like to hear about in future podcasts. You can find the show notes at homesellerhomebuyer.com, and you can leave your comments, questions, and suggestions just by using the Contact Us button in the upper right-hand corner of the website or email us at info at homesellerhomebuyer.com. Tell your family, friends, and coworkers about Home Seller, Home Buyer Podcast. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to the Home Seller, Home Buyer Podcast and catch us on the next episode. Thank you for listening so you can stay informed. <music>